Red Pin Logic, shout out to my guy Red Pin Logic, did a great job on this video, and I love where this video goes. Please let me go to hell. This is a message to all the Christians on this app, on behalf of all the heathens, please just let us go to hell. Like, just let us go there, and we are asking you to let us go there so you don't have to worry about saving us anymore. Ooh. Okay, so first of all, this young lady, she doesn't know how to use the app. You notice all the air? in between punches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little like, way you can go right into TikTok, into TikTok and just trim it. Yep. You know, so so this is like a mom who's like trying oh. to be edgy, you know, and and doing this whole thing and not really like, you're not even good at like... You're not even good at the whole content creation. At the, at the content creation thing, you know? <sighs> you don't have to comment on everything anymore. You can let us go there. We we want to go there. Because every day you here... Say, you saw that breath? Yeah. <gasps> the comments that I get. So Number bad. one, I'm such an idiot for thinking that the world just popped up into existence because what people will do is say, I believe in God and a creator and it makes more sense because there's creation. So there must be a creator not realizing that they've just placed a middleman in the problem and backed the problem up a step and they didn't solve anything because then you have to answer, how did God come into existence? Because God is categorically different. Yeah. Something that is eternal is categorically different than something that has been created and came into existence the theology of god yeah the understanding of god is is that he is eternal yes like that is the point yeah so she's, so make, she's just making a categorical yeah, if we're playing within the rules of god exists mm -hmm. then the rules of god exists says god has always existed that's right so the base is covered even even if you don't believe it that's right well, god so. always existed without being created then you admit that things can exist without creation so then why can't the universe just exist and even if you prove deism you still have all your work cut out for you in proving that god is in any way good or interacts with the world or is worthy of worship Stop. so 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 her first point is so what's more likely a infinite all-knowing all-powerful thing created everything or nothing created everything, right? It, 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 it logically doesn't make sense. Yeah. So for the first part, yes, because we're saying God is categorically different than create than His creation. That that is why we're saying that's logically more coherent to say there's a creator at all at the at the helm of all things, right? And then she's saying, well, even if you prove deism, which is God is detached, right? Like He's a, he created, but He just kind of stepped back, right? Okay. Which would make Him not all powerful. She said, well, then you still got to prove that he's worthy of worship and you still got to prove the Christian God, which was, by the way, I think Richard Dawkins claim. Was it Richard Dawkins or in a conversation with Francis Collins, he admits that the fine tuning of the universe is a good argument for God. But then he goes, well, but how do you go from that to Jesus and Bart the crucifixion? No, oh, no, not Bart Ehrman. Francis Collins. It was on the Unbelievable uh, podcast. Go ahead. Or which one is the right God? You literally solve nothing by adding God to the mystery of existence. You solve nothing? You solve nothing. Nothing? Nothing. Like, okay, pretend we don't know God exists. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big problem. That's a big problem we just solved. Yeah. So now you're like, oh, we know God exists. Mm -hmm. Like in the world where we know God exists yep. and everyone acknowledges it, yep. we didn't solve anything. Yeah, that's a big, that's a big, that's a big. I mean, we solution. solved the whole idea that like, oh, I need to be in a religion now. Right, 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 right. right. Like, like that cut out half of the problem right. or maybe a quarter of it, atheism. Yep. Now you got to figure out. But I mean, nothing is kind of a big. Yeah. Now this is this is just she she she's just blinded by her own hyperbolic. bias here. Yeah. The most rational response to looking at the universe and the origins of the universe and the origins of consciousness is to say, I don't know. Not let me ask what first century Palestinians thought, since they didn't even know that germs made us. You That's see that? Such a, yeah, it's such a like a little leftist dig. Like, <laughs> get the freak out of like here. Like the dude. virtue signal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus was a first, first century Palestinian Jew <laughs> who 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 was a uh, who who hung out with whores and was you know like started adding all the was LGTV. Right. <laughs> it was right, like, what right. are you talking about? You're yeah. just making stuff up. So she said, uh, first century Palestinians who didn't know germs made us sick. Yada yada yada. Well, I mean, they, they were actually uniquely cleanly compared to the, all the other nations around them. Like, hence all don't the eat shrimp. Well, that the foods they ate, but they yeah. were there was also washing things washing that they hands, had to do. Yeah. yeah, that other nations that didn't necessarily practice at the same rates. Maybe we can just leave them where they are and have a modern conversation about the mysteries of the universe. Let's just uh, stop it. There. Pause it. So a modern conversation that can't include God—that's a big one. One. So uh, watch this breakdown here. This is good. Okay. 
there. This is actually a seven minute TikTok video and I'm not gonna respond to the whole thing yeah, here. Yeah, good. I just wanna offer <laughs> a couple of thoughts. First, it's completely appropriate for Christians to warn people of the coming judgment. After all, that's what Jesus did. In fact, Jesus uses some pretty graphic imagery when he tells people that it's better to pluck out your eye or cut off your hand mm -hmm. if it causes you to sin than to be cast into hell. Yep. Think of it this way, just as any decent person would warn someone of the dangers of taking cocaine, any decent Christian who believes in a real coming judgment should warn others of the dangers of sin. Of course, someone could say, please let me overdose. All you people, telling me not to take drugs, just leave me alone, let mm -hmm. me overdose, I want to overdose. Right. Well, this raises the question, when do we give up ah. on warning people? It leads to our second point. Christian, it's not your job to save people. Warn people, yes. Correct people, sure. Share the gospel, absolutely. But there comes a time when you've done or said all yes. you can. Yes. You can't force people to follow Jesus. That's right. Consider another warning from Jesus, and this one is to his followers. In the Sermon on the Mount, he says, do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. This is another powerful image. Here Jesus is referring to people who reject and ridicule the gospel. Just as a pig has no interest in a priceless pearl, some people show utter contempt for the gospel. And, and this is where I think some of us would be better served to set boundaries with certain friends and family. They're like, we're, we're just not going to have this these conversations. If, if your conclusion is God doesn't exist or the Christian, Christianity is stupid or Jesus is whatever, right? Then we, just, we don't need to keep ha rehashing the conversation. You know where I'm at. You know what I believe. This is where I stand. You should repent, believe, place your faith in Jesus. The, the issue is it's usually the atheists who want to bait people into these goofy conversations and then get mad and go, well, just let me go to hell. It's like, I didn't even want to have this conversation with you, bud. <laughs> I was just trying to hang yeah. out, you know? And so they, they do this on TikTok. They do this. A lot of times, if you got, we all know, we all have probably that one or two atheists in our life. Nice to meet you, Ruslan. What do you think about God? Right, right, right. <laughs> I'm talking about folks that, like, in my life that I continue having this conversation with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't even, I'm like, bro, they, they you bring know, it up. I don't want to talk about it. And they bring it up, right? Yeah. And, and, and at some point you just go, we're not going to have this conversation. I, I I was with a friend recently and I literally told him like, we're not going to talk about Israel and Palestine and like, and we're not going to talk about God. That's like, we're, we're not going to debate this, right? Because we've debated it a hundred oh, yeah, times yeah, yeah, in yeah. front of my family. He was around my family. Oh, oh, oh okay. Can't okay. kick it with my family. And I said, we're not going to talk about Israel and Palestine. We're not going to talk about God. We're not gonna go there. He's like, fair enough. And he and, and to his credit, <laughs> like he didn't bring it up. And, and a few times it kind of came up. He was he was very like neutral about it. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Because yeah, we're just we're not we're not we got you have to have boundaries with people. And so again, as you guys are thinking about going into the holidays, you're probably gonna be around those people that face different views. You're probably gonna be around those folks who have a different uh maybe political persuasion, religious persuasion, theological persuasion, know how to set boundaries, but also at the same time. Consider just praying for them, man. I think sometimes we in our attempt to wanna be saviors and to want to be to, to, in our messiah complex sometimes we don't spend enough time just slowing down and praying for those people in our life and knowing where am i just trying to love people and, and like uh uh red pin logic said could tell a uh, an addict not to keep doing drugs like when is that the heart versus when, when, when do i have a messiah complex and i'm being codependent and trying to rescue people and I'm right, and you. There's really inadequacy inside of you, and you are trying to be the savior. And usually, these types of folks, they they're like this in their uh, dating relationships, they're like this in their personal relationships. You have to know that difference and have wisdom, especially around gatherings that that may not be good. And one of the best things you could do in terms of getting the wisdom, but also be praying for the people, is to pick up one of our Bless God prayer journals. I have people in my real life that I'm constantly praying for. I'm praying for them to come to salvation, but a lot of times I'm also praying for wisdom in terms of how to interact with them and when to have those conversations. Probably not at the dinner table at Thanksgiving when there's a bunch of family around and my kids are around, right? Probably not in those types of situations. So anyway, if you want to go deeper and develop the prayer discipline of consistently praying and then seeing God answer those prayers because you're writing them down, they're going in a different part of your brain, you're going to remember them likely, go to blessgodprayer.shop to pick up our prayer journal. All right, blessgodprayer.shop. If you can't afford the prayer journal, get the PDF version, blessgodpdf.shop. All right.